Hey, what's up, guys? Frugal BC here, and I'm here with another crypto talk. And this week, I am talking to Lauren and Monty from Crypto Nerd as another YouTube channel. They've, they cover a lot of the same stuff we do, so I thought it'd be really fun to have a conversation. So, how are you guys doing today? Doing Fantastic. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. we're uh, we're we're just stoked to be on the other end of the interview interviewee like scenario today. Much yeah. less pressure on this side of the camera, I got to tell you. Like, oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Now I didn't have to like prep up a whole lot and figure out, okay, what questions am I going to ask? <laughs> and, you know, usually there's a lot of like research that goes into these things. And yeah. so I know, but you know, I'm a, I'm a journalist in my day job, so I, I, you know, you haven't faced the tough questions yet, but they're coming. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Uh, I, good. I kid, I kid. Well, I thought, I thought a really good way to start because you guys sent me some bios and I, it, it sounds like you guys have some really interesting backgrounds. So maybe you could just do a short little intro, kind of each of you tell a little bit about yourself. And then I just want to get into like how you guys got into crypto. Lauren, you go ahead. Oh, I was going to say Monty, you first. Ah. <laughs> okay, I can, I can go. Um, so hi, yeah, my name is Lauren Wixom. Um, my background is in leadership and social media. Um, I've been doing that for a couple of years now. Um, I am obsessed with Instagram and the whole digital marketing side of things. Um, I love content creation, um, especially when it comes to film. Photography, it's fun, but you know, you'd be surprised that there's a difference between photography and videography. I mean, besides the fact that one is still and one is moving, um, just like you could be, you could have a whole setup and then just taking a picture versus actually videoing it, it comes out completely different. Um, so yeah, I love that side of things. Um, I do, um, I actually sing and I have um, music on all music platforms. I've done music videos. Um, I've dabbled in acting. I've been in a couple feature films. One of them um, was with Lil Romeo. I don't know if you know who that is. Um, yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that was, it was a fun experience. Um, so I'm still dabbling in that a little bit, but you know, obviously now um, I'm working with Monty on his YouTube channel, The Crypto Nerd. Um, and Look up for some Lauren Wixom like musical NFTs in the very near future. Uh, we're yeah. gonna, yeah. we're gonna tap that. into that talent. And, yeah, uh, that's and, really and cool. I was gonna those. say we we uh, we share the film thing in in common too. Uh, a good friend of mine is a filmmaker and has done like four feature length films. Wow. Uh, we're we're currently working on his latest, which is a Christmas movie. Which let me tell oh, you, wow. never ever do a Christmas movie. It's the worst. It's, I hear that a lot. It's a it's a ton of filming when it's like. 20 degrees out and you're like shivering and you got to do the take over and over and it's it's a real bummer so um it's fun you know, i'm a photographer too as well as a journalist and uh so i appreciate the artistry that goes into the into filmmaking and also used to be a musician back in the day too so, oh, awesome. well i still play but you know i don't really play out much what do you anymore play? but yep i'm a guitar i'm a guitar player back in the day i was a bass player uh back oh, in my early 20s when i was a young lad and uh, so that was fun, but Monty, we're going to move this along and get right to you too, because I, I was interested in your background. I saw you have a public speaking background. I thought that was interesting because when I heard you, I thought, oh, that sounds like a radio guy. He's got the radio voice down. He does. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Lauren and I actually met on another project where I was looking for content creation uh, for some online training videos and for uh, media content, really. And so uh, my day job is uh, creating those training videos and flying around the country and uh, training and motivating sales teams, primarily for the financial and um, sales industries. So getting up on a stage or being in front of folks for public speaking comes very naturally to me. Uh, mm -hmm. I have been blessed to have had lots and lots of practice and I've messed it up more times than I can count. And so now when I get in front of a camera or a group, uh, you know, it feels like second nature. That's awesome. Because I'll tell you, I did not have, uh, I was always in print. I was never, I never appeared in things. And when I first, I started my YouTube channel in January and I had a podcast before that. So I had a little practice like doing some speaking and doing interviews, but I was basically taking my interviews and putting them on, putting, it's a, like a local podcast. So it's for like people in the area, interviewing mm -hmm. people around the area. And when I, when I started doing my YouTube channel, you know, the first several videos were so cringy. I just couldn't even watch them hardly. 
But as, yeah. as I edited them, it was like, I slowly started kind of like picking my ticks out, you know? So like I, I'd find little things I was doing. And I, I know, I just noticed I started doing them less because I think I'm kind of lazy and I don't want to like edit more than I have to. So if I could just improve it the first time, then I have less work to do afterwards. And so it's, I, I didn't really expect that, but that's probably been one of the best things of, of uh, starting my YouTube channel is it just got me to be a better speaker. That is a happy byproduct for sure. Absolutely. Totally. So tell me about, tell me about first off, how you guys got into crypto. Like what was your intro and like, what was kind of the progression? You know, some people, like a lot of people come to it with some skepticism at first and then they kind of get one over, you know, what was it like for you guys? And you can take it whatever order you want. I'll go first because I actually yeah. introduced Lauren to crypto. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, so it'll, it'll be a natural handoff. So uh, I had been in the finance industry for many, many years. And in, uh, you know, some of these offices, I start to hear the buzz, you know, 2016, 2017, people were invested, you know, it was, uh, you know, everybody was talking about Binance and, you know, you go to, you know, the water cooler and, you know, this company and everybody's talking about crypto. And so, you know, I'm trying to, to, to get to know the, the corporate um, culture, wherever I'm located. And I, you know, just start talking to folks and they're showing me crypto and they're talking to me about it and they're talking to me about how it's going to change the way finance you know how we interact with each other cross-border payments all these really cool things and i remember a long time ago uh somebody had talked to me about bitcoin and mining and you know i just didn't do it because uh i remember at the time the computer was located in the bedroom and my wife was like yeah it's gonna be too loud (laughs) <laughs> and that's why <laughs> that's why I didn't Bitcoin mine uh, oh, it's because it was going to be too loud because it was going at all hours, I think, you know, how it was set up back then. Um, but anyway, I, you know, I got into, you know, talk to folks about Binance and uh, the ICO craze in 2017. You know, you buy a little bit of ETH and then you then it just went crazy and, you're, and yep. you know, it, it was exploding and you could do all kinds of, you know, crazy things. It just seems so easy, you know, and, and part of 2017 to, you know, uh, you're just going to, you know, um, you're going to sell high and buy low, of course. That's uh, why wouldn't you do that? It's um, so easy. It's so easy. <laughs> and uh, I did moderately well and, and got into that, um, uh, you know, the tail end of that craze there. And I think uh, before we started rolling, um, Electronium was one of my longtime mm-hmm. holds. Um, XRP, uh, I still have some XRP from, from those days. And a, a lot of other coins, though just gone right just gone, they, right, right? They, they don't they don't matter anymore there's a you know very little market for them a bunch of the icos i think besides electronium none of the other icos zero of the other ones uh made sense in fact mm-hmm. one of the things that that motivated me to get involved mm-hmm. with the youtube community in the first place was the fact that i got scammed and that not like it wasn't like a utterly deceitful, but it, it, the company got shut down by the SEC. They were making claims about being associated with uh, another company called, um, um, oh, I forget what it was. Uh, it was some kind of a, a computer chip company, uh, but they also claimed to be associated with like Disney and a few other like big names. And uh, they found out and shut them down. And, you know, I lost like $10,000, not a small amount. Oh wow! And so it was a pretty significant amount. And I had, Luckily, I had done well on some other um, projects where, you know, it was wasn't a total loss for me if I if I take it, you know, as a whole, but it wasn't a fun feeling. And so I decided, hey, I'm going to search for good projects and I want to get the information out to the public so they know what other good projects are. And I did research on projects. And really, that's that's how I found Algorand, too, is I was looking for some other reputable projects. And, you, you know, when you look at the Algorand team, you look at, you know, Nobel Prizes, you look at Turing Awards, you look at, you know, MIT, you look at, you know, the, just the history that's there and how reputable the, the group is that's behind the technology. Oh, yeah. You, know, you, you got, felt, you got the father of modern cryptography. Behind exactly. It. That's, right. That's huge. Mm-hmm. So um, Silvio's history was part of the reason that I found Algorand. And, and then I then I was slowly drawn in more to that ecosystem and, uh, you know, put myself out there as far as providing information for others. And then, like I mentioned earlier, Lauren and I, we actually met, um, you know, on some other projects, totally unrelated to crypto, but I was working on that. And, you know, we've got like three or four projects working simultaneously. And I said, hey, 
you know, this crypto thing has actually kind of taken off. You, you know, there's more right. requests for this YouTube than I can keep up with. There, you know, there's the Twitter stuff. There's this, these other, you know, PR opportunities. We've got NFTs coming out now. I need help with this. We could turn this into a legitimate business and with multiple revenue streams. And she said, yeah, uh, I'm down. Tell me more. Let's do and, it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And that was that was quite a while ago. So now now I've given you the intro, Lauren. Go ahead and cool. Yeah. Um back whenever Bitcoin became a thing, I was just like, what is this? What what is just what is this? And like over throughout the years, I mean, I know um crypto hasn't, you know, it's still fairly new. Um seeing it, you know, me being on social media a lot, I've seen it from a lot of the different influencers that I follow, like, oh, invest in Bitcoin, oh, invest in Ethereum, oh, do this, that, like all these different coins. I'm just like, okay, yeah, it's cool. Like it caught my interest, but I never really had a reason to dig in. Um, so that's what Monty did for me is he kind of pushed me to dig in, do a deep dive, learn more about it. And now that I'm actually involved with this YouTube channel and even creating videos, not just with us together, but even some on my own, you know, I'm being forced to actually really, like I said earlier, like dive deep into what cryptocurrency is, especially Algorand. So I don't have as cool of a story as Monty. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, yeah. You know, it's, it's funny, Monty, actually, our, our paths sound kind of similar to crypto because around 2017, it was kind of Kind of like mid 2017 was kind of when I started buying some Bitcoin and Ethereum, and I think I even bought some Litecoin at the time. Oh, yeah. And I kind of thought, yeah, I should probably start putting some money into this. I didn't really think a whole lot about it. And then, as you know, as you remember, the end of 2017 is where it kind of went bananas and mm -hmm. shot up to the, to the moon. And then yeah. I started then I started hearing stories about people like taking out loans to buy Bitcoin. And I thought, oh, that's not good. <laughs> that, yeah. that that could be a bubble. Well, yep, I think we're heading for the the cliff. So I'm like, all right, I'm selling this stuff. And I sold, you know, so I sold off and I, I didn't, didn't really realize at the time that I was following the market cycle. Um, I kind of did this just thinking like, oh yeah, that's that's the top. And, you know, I sold a bunch off and then it went down, you know, dropped into Crypto 2018. Winter. It just dropped like crazy. Or, or was it yeah. the end of 2017? I can't remember when it dropped, but but I sold I sold everything. So I'm like, oh, I made some money. I guess that was fun. And of course, my big mistake was I didn't get back in. I probably should have got back in when the market was, but I didn't understand the cycles or anything at the time. Yeah. And then slowly but surely, I, I kind of I kind of started getting back into it right before the the bull cycle. So unbeknownst to me, I started following the the, the bull bear cycle again, mm -hmm. um, just just sort of out of dumb luck. And the funny thing is, way back, you know, you were you were kind of, I think Lauren, you were kind of talking about like seeing this thing and just kind of being like. Oh, what is this stuff like I don't what's yeah. going on with this thing like I, I remember knowing about Bitcoin back and seeing everyone talking about Bitcoin back in like 2013 2014 and I remember when it was like you know it was a few cents and then it was a few dollars and I remember even when it was like you know a, a few hundred dollars I thought well that's well that's the end of that that's it's not going to get any higher than that right right of course I was way off on that yeah. and there was a few times yeah. where I was going to buy it and I was like you know I think people don't remember like back in the day you couldn't just like get out your credit card and buy bitcoin like there was like was a difficult. whole process like you had to go through the exchanges and send money orders in and it was a whole thing and so i think that probably turned a lot of people off you know knowing knowing now what i or knowing that if i'd known then what i know now you know i might have thought hey maybe i should go you know bite yeah. the bullet and try to figure this thing yeah. out but, but you know hindsight's 2020 20, right so 100 percent so I think you have some really interesting stuff on your channels. And one of the things, uh, one of the things I saw is the NFT spotlight. And I don't think I'm saying that exactly right, but you guys like highlight different NFT creators. Tell me more about that. Yeah, my NFT creator feature. Creator feature, uh, that's what it was. Yep. Yeah. Um, I just remember Monty, you know, whenever he first brought me onto the channel, he's like, okay, we need some content. What you got for me? Uh, so I was like, mm, NFT, because I remember he was telling me about NFTs and, you know, we're talking about having me create music and then selling those as NFTs. I'm like, okay, I want to be an NFT creator, but I should probably look at other NFT creators, see what are they selling? Mm -hmm. um, what are their brands all about? So that's how the NFT creator feature was born. Mm -hmm. um, so I do those videos. Uh, they're uploaded every Monday. Um, and I find... Uh, 
NFT creators, uh, specifically on the Algorand chain, uh, blockchain, um, that use their art for good. I like to see um, artists that try to donate towards charities or special projects. That's that's kind of like my thing. So, yeah, art art with a purpose. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. That's a really cool. That's a really cool uh, way to do it. Really cool framework to to sell that with. And, uh, you know, it's interesting that they're, they're all on Algorand. So that's a really specific choice, I assume. Yeah, I, th I would think so. So uh, part of my ethos is the uh, the environmental impact of Algorand. I'm is I'm especially attracted to. Um, we actually started a an NFT project uh, ourselves as well, following in that mold. Uh, so we've got a, a project getting released on uh, I think the twentieth, where we partnered um, with another company to purchase carbon credits. So for every NFT purchased, we're going to purchase the carbon credits. They're verified on chain. And so we're offsetting um, any carbon you know, impact. And so we've got a carbon negative NFT series. And the carbon credit thing is pretty cool too. Like it's uh, supporting projects like um, you know, rainforest, um, reforestation in uh, like Peru and places like that, which is really cool. Wow, um, that's really but, neat. That's a really neat, uh, that's a really neat way to do it. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, it's it's funny because we're both. I think we're both really really bullish on Algorand, and um, I like it. I like it for you know. I do I do appreciate the environmental aspect of it. Um, I'm I'm someone who likes to if I can if I can bike take my bicycle somewhere. I'm always going to take my bike over driving. That's pretty yeah. important to me. And uh, but the other thing I like about Algorand is, and I keep I keep coming back to it. It's funny. I didn't really set out to be like an Algorand channel. Mm -hmm. But I keep coming back to Algorand because all the stuff on it is interesting. And it's really easy to get into because you can go check out anything because the transaction fees are so incredibly low. Yeah, absolutely. Like you can actually use it, unlike Ethereum. That's, you know, mm -hmm. Ethereum seems like a good promise, but like with poor execution. Yeah. And this is, one of, this is one of, of those crypto, this is one of those crypto things. So, you know, I, I I don't want to get, I never want to give people the impression that I'm like, I'm like, you know, I have a blind spot for crypto because I think there are things to criticize and you, you know, user experience is, is one of the things that often is lacking in a lot of crypto projects. Mm -hmm. And also just, just, uh, you know, there's sort of this warped sense of like, like how is Ethereum still a thing right now? If, if you had a company and to do anything with the company, you had to pay like a 20, uh, like a 20, 30, $40 transaction fee on top of that, like they'd be out of business tomorrow. Some new co other company would have already came and ate their lunch, right? Yeah. Somehow in crypto, magically that doesn't happen. So it's, it's confusing to me. You would think that the, the community would rebel against that and stop using it. Um, there's just so many people I think are kind of like, you know, um, you know, it's kind of like the legacy coin that they, yeah. they've, they've just been used to doing it this way and they're trained to doing it this way. And they just don't know any better if they haven't used anything else. So I don't know. We'll see what ETH 2.0 comes out. Uh, the, the uh, you know, the, uh, I don't know, the illusory, uh, you know, ETH 2.0, we'll see what happens when that happens. Um, but it, it's got a lot of promise. Yeah, a lot of promise. I haven't seen a lot of urgency from them. When I, when I hear Vitalik on podcasts, like, I didn't really hear, I didn't really get a sense of urgency of, oh yeah, we've got this giant problem that we got to fix. Seems yeah. like, oh yeah, it's coming. Yeah, I, I think because there's enough people that just keep using it. I guess uh, so. I, I don't know, he's, he's just trained the population to, um, that it's okay, that's normal. So what are some, uh, what are some projects on Algorand that you guys are super excited about? Well, uh, we interview all kinds of folks, right? Mm -hmm. um, personal pet projects, um, NFTs. I'm a real big fan of the Algawana series. They are planting trees for, um, uh, you know, NFTs that are sold. And uh, obviously we are, we are, you know, bought into that idea. Um, so as far as NFTs goes, Algawana. Uh, as I far as- I on them actually. Yeah, right. And uh, like, and- Rightfully so, because, uh, you know, kind of the blue trip uh, project, I think, right now on Algorand. Um, DeFi wise, um, there's an AlgoFi company out there out of uh, New York City, and they are promising to bring some DeFi um, applications that are sorely needed. So Algorand is, is prime for DeFi. And yeah. You know, for some reason, it hasn't really come to full fruition yet. Yieldly, 
is is pretty big for liquidity pools and and yield farming and they've got the the basics down the foundation and mm-hmm. i'm super excited to see what they do and they're building some bridges as well so yeah. that people from from eth can 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 come on over and i think of them as the hub so and i i don't want to put you know a speak for them but i think of them as like the airport for algorand so if every blockchain were its own country i think of yieldly as the airport like if you're coming from another blockchain mm-hmm. you got to fly into algorand they've got all the bridges that lead to yieldly and yieldly is kind of like the airport and i the, the way they've got their their um, yield farms kind of set up is sort of like uh, you know a kiosk at the airport you know you're going to pay a little bit higher premium because it's it's convenient. It's right there at the airport, uh, but you can get like anything you want. It's like the international swap meet at the airport. Um, and so if you fly into to Algorand, you stop at Yieldly, you swap in for Yieldly, the local current currency, and you can shop at all the outlet stores. And it's a little more expensive than if you went to like the wholesale like directly, but it's super convenient. That's how I think of Yieldly right now, which isn't necessarily DeFi, but it's it's a cool application and some cool futures. They also do some cool launch pad stuff. Um, so DeFi, I like AlgoFi. Um, Yieldly, I like for their bridges and for their ability to attract some top talent. Have you checked out Tiny Man yet? Oh yeah, yeah. Love Tiny Man as well. That's really um, helpful. Uh, I just, I just yeah. discovered that like a couple of days ago, to be honest. Oh yeah, no, fantastic service. Uh, we sorely needed um, some kind of a, an exchange like Tiny Man to go live. Um, and there's a whole bunch of like Algorand specific ASAs that you just can't get anywhere else. Um, you know, so Tiny Man really fulfilled that need. And uh, we just got our first meme coin that just took off. Um, and I was like, oh man, is this what we're gonna get known for? Uh, you know, we got our, our we got our first meme cone. So it's not, not exactly Doge, but we got some meme about coins Akita? out there. Yes. Yep. So uh, yeah, I just did a video about that uh, last night. Yeah. Right. What, what's your What's your feelings on it? I mean, is it a good thing for the for the markets? Is it bad? Is it hurt? Well, you know, I used to I used to really have I, I used to just completely disregard meme coins as just worthless and pointless and who cares? Like, mm-hmm. um, and then someone framed it as well. These are community coins, and they're building communities around yeah. them. Like. Okay, I guess I kind of see that. I still, I still think of them as like, you know, if we've got a couple extra bucks laying around and you don't care what happens to it, sure, go play around with it. Just not, not something to like take as a serious part of your portfolio. I guess that's mm-hmm. my my current take on it. Yeah, I I, I agree with that. Um, I haven't covered it yet, um, but I I'm probably gonna have to at least address it. I think because it is it is news, um, okay. it has impacted the the community and it's it's noteworthy to to say the least. Uh, I, you know, there's some concern there if uh, you know if it crashes hard and people get hurt or if they right. you know there there's some concern there. But all in all, I think it brings some good attention. I, um, I, I, I always think of stuff like that. It's like, well, this is this is a low downside, high upside, high potential upside. So. Yeah. As long as you're putting a very small amount of money into it, you know, but you should treat it kind of like gambling. You know, this is this is money I'm throwing on the road. hundred percent. And it, you you have to be ready to say goodbye to it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I feel like that way about my whole portfolio, just in case something happens. I mean, I would be devastated. True. It would it would be terrible, but it could happen. You know, regulation could just drop on a dime here in the U.S. or, you know, something could happen that the, the, we could get a ruling against uh, mm-hmm. Ripple that just sends ripples throughout the community. Um, you know, who knows? Mm-hmm. Well, here's a go, going kind of on that theme and uh, we'll give we'll give you both a chance to answer that. Um, what with obviously I'm not going to ask in numbers, but like what percentage would you say is is in crypto of your of your portfolio is in crypto versus like traditional finance either either individual stocks or index funds or that sort of thing hmm. um so my portfolio at this point is uh, i mean i'm in real estate um is my 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 day job so uh-huh. i would say 80 percent of my portfolio is in real estate now my worlds have collided a little bit though because now you can invest in real estate through crypto just a, you know a little bit there's companies like lofty yep. um and you can you can invest in um uh, like vesta equity uh, it, you you can do some some cool things on chain now and so my worlds have collided um overall though i would say probably 80 percent in real estate 20 percent in crypto 
Um, I hold virtually no stocks and bonds. Um, In fact, uh, people thought I was crazy in 2016. I liquidated my 401k, converted it all over to um, uh, crypto at the time. And uh, Mm -hmm. I came out like a smelling like roses. So (laughs) that's dedication. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I went all in. I'm a, big, I'm a big fan of Lofty over here. Yeah, I really, I really think it's an awesome platform. I like what they're doing. And I was kind of surprised I reached out to the founder and asked about an interview. And uh, he said that they weren't, they weren't able to give interviews with people, but he's been, he's been going back and forth with me when I have any questions and I've included some of his answers in my videos. So talking about uh, uh, Max, right? Max. Yep. Yeah. So Max has done the same thing with me. So he's consistent. Um, I reach out to him every so often and say, hey, well, how about now? (laughs) Um, And and he he has consistently said, no, not now. We're not, you know, we're we're not going to do that. Um, But uh, I think they put together a good plan over there. Interestingly enough, um, they did not consult with Algorand ahead of time. So Algorand proper didn't know that they were working with Algorand. They chose that blockchain independently and integrated blockchain for their NFTs, essentially, um, just as as users, as end users. Um, and it's nice to see that kind of um, uh, application take place. I agree. Well, Lauren, Lauren, I didn't want to skip you. Uh, tell me, tell me about no, your. You're portfolio. good. I am new here. Mm-hmm. I just got on Coinbase. So. Gotcha. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, I have very little money in Coinbase, just trying to figure out, you know, how is this going to work? Um, you know, playing around with algo and then maybe eventually I can get a Bitcoin. Maybe Mm -hmm. we'll see. Um, you know, I want to, you know, I don't want to put all my eggs in one basket. I of course want to kind of branch out. Um, Mm -hmm. yeah, hopefully in the next couple of years, I can start um, investing more and more and more until eventually what was, what was that phrase you used Monty? I come out smelling like roses. There you go. (laughs) You come smelling like roses. Yeah. Uh, Let me me introduce you to Yieldly and how to yield farm. And uh, we'll we'll walk you through that process. Yes. Yeah. That's a good, that's a good way to start for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's interesting because I, I, you know, I came from before crypto, I kind of came from the financial independence retire early movement. Mm. And uh, there's a lot of overlaps, but it's funny that the people in, uh oh, Okay, let me close that. It's funny because the people in in the fire are like super skeptical about crypto, like yeah. really skeptical. And they just, mm-hmm. they just, I still see comments about, oh, that Bitcoin, it's worthless. And I'm like, how can you say that at this point? I just, I don't get it. Yeah. It's literally um, not worthless. I can exchange it for 66,000, whatever it is today. Right. Yeah. This is the most, I did a whole video on like just the ridiculous things I hear about crypto and how incorrect mm-hmm. they are, but it's like, mm-hmm. um, uh, it's, it's the adoption thing, you know, uh, like when you, we watch Seinfeld, how, how much does the internet play into Seinfeld or friends, you know, it's like the internet was, yeah, it was around, but we didn't really use it the way we do now. It's not as ubiquitous. It is, yeah, now it's like all. everywhere. It's like, we're, it's just a part of us. And Crypto, I really think crypto is in Web3 is headed in the same direction. That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. I would wholeheartedly agree that uh, the next generation, it will just be normal. You know, they'll they'll be like, you had had paper money? What? Right, exactly. (laughs) How how quaint. (laughs) I mean, it just makes so much sense because so much money of, so much of our money is digital anyway. It just makes sense to have, have it be locked to a blockchain where it's transit, it's traceable, it's unique, you know, it can't be doubled, it can't be duplicated or erased. Immutable ledger. More sense. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, uh, so I, I'm a cheapskate and I only have so much time on my Zoom. So we're, we're getting close <laughs> to the end. <laughs> but I kind of wanted to keep this around around 30, 40 minutes anyway. Uh, what's something that you guys would want to want to close with? What's something that we didn't talk about that you'd want to talk about? Mm, well, definitely the, the website um, yep. releases that are coming. So uh, around Decipher this, this month, you will see us release the uh, Algorand community um, project like review board on our website, cryptonerd.com. Uh, you can go check it out. It's sort of like a Yelp for Algorand. So if you, if you see a project that is new on Algorand, uh, you want to report on it, give us, uh, give us a heads up. There's literally too many of them. As you know, uh, there's so many projects out there, it's hard to keep up. 
Uh, and yeah. so we want the community to give us that information. So we figure out a way to crowdsource that. So you come in and you, you find a new project, you, you report on it, you give us some updates on it, and you can also rate current projects. So if you find one that isn't up to um, you know, good customer service or is a bad actor, you can rate them and give them poor reviews and the community will come to CryptoNerd.com and they'll see those reviews. So if there's bad actors, we wanna expose them because I told you earlier, I got scammed. Yeah. Um, and so we want to like keep the keep the community clean, keep keep them safe. Um, we also have devised a um, an ASA, our own nerd token. So if you come and you contribute to the website, then we will reward you in the nerd tokens. You can trade in for things like um, the snazzy uh, sweatshirt and swag and um, special NFTs that you can purchase with just the tokens themselves um, to give it some, you know, just a, a loyalty token. It's not a it's not meant to be a meme token or a fundraising event or anything like that. It's just meant to be a reward for interacting with the website and being a good community member. Um, so That's we're really cool. excited about that. Well, keep me in the loop on that. I definitely will cover that, uh, cover that website because that'll be, that's definitely big algo news in my opinion. Yeah, we're stoked about it. Cool. Well, guys, thanks so much for being on the Frugal BC channel. It was really great talking with you. If you guys ever want to collaborate on anything, let me know. Absolutely. I'm for looking sure. forward to it. All right.